you too. It's the battle of the Android Titans. We got the S22 Ultra versus the Pixel 7 Pro. Google and Samsung going head to head and I can't wait to get into it. Now a lot of things between these two are gonna line up neck and neck and then some things are gonna be that creative or characteristic edge for one over the other. So let's break it down. First place to start is build quality and design. Now from a design standpoint, look at these two beautifully matte black built devices. I gotta be honest, when it comes to the backing, the frost glass backing wins by far, hands down. That's what we're getting used to. We're getting that on the iPhones. We've been just getting that as the typical flagship backing. The Pixel 7 Pro kind of has that older style, glass, glossy, fingerprint magnet backing. I just prefer the matte. Between these two, color-wise, the Samsung is just unbeatable in my opinion. Another thing you're gonna notice is the S22 Ultra is packing one more camera than the Pixel 7 Pro. They got that Periscope Ultra Zoom lens. Now, as far as the materials being used, they both are using that Gorilla Glass Victus, but it's just Gorilla Glass Victus on the Pixel 7 Pro, and then you got Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the S22 Ultra. When we get into like the materials, these are both using aluminum. So they're both rocking these aluminum framing, and they're both rocking the exact same IP68 dust and water resistant rating. And when it comes to sizing, these are like literally almost identical. If you look at the technical specs between the two, it's crazy. All right, let's take a look at these two devices from a design and build quality perspective. There's this matte black frost glass back in on the S22 Ultra. I would love to see Pixel incorporate this because this is what we love and know to appreciate now. Less fingerprints. This glossy smooth backing glass is what the Pixel 7 Pro is rocking. It's cool, it's nice but it's smooth and it's a little bit more slippery. Okay, let's get into the displays. Now this is an area that's gonna be interesting. I can tell you from my eye, which you guys can see, we are in direct sunlight, that the S22 Ultra by far is a brighter display. Now this has a 1750 max nit of brightness on the S22 Ultra versus the 1500 max nit brightness on the Pixel 7 Pro. But in general, these both have a darker background as you can see. The Pixel is holding its own against the S22 Ultra. I do have the highest brightness setting on the S22 Ultra on. And I'm not gonna lie, it's neck and neck right here. There is no clear winner, although there is a difference um, on paper in the nit max brightness. And let's take a look at these beautiful front OLED panels. Now both of these are rocking beautiful 120 hertz refresh rate OLED 1440p panels. Might be the same one, who knows? It's a slight difference between the two because if you look at the pixels when we get technical, there's a different pixel density between these two displays. So we have a 6.7 inch display on the Pixel 7 Pro versus a 6.8 inch display on the S22 Ultra. Now as far as pixels go, on the Pixel 7 Pro we're gonna be having 1440 by 3120 in pixels with a 512 PPI pixel density versus the Samsung S22 Ultra, which comes in at 1440 by 3088 pixels with a 500 PPI density. They both have always on displays. Okay, let's talk platforms because between these two, that's a separating factor. On the Pixel 7 Pro, you're being given Android 13. And to add on to that, the security patches and updates as far as Android goes are gonna happen way quicker and a lot faster on the Pixel 7 Pro. This S22 Ultra is still rocking Android 12. Why is that, CJ? It's because anytime there's a new Android platform, well, they have to send it out. Samsung has to add their One UI on top of it and add-ons and things of that matter. And that has to get programmed before it can be released to the public. All of this delays the process of updates when it comes to like Samsung and so forth in comparison to the Pixel 7 Pro. So if you're someone who likes to have the latest Android and the latest security patches in real time, then the Pixel 7 Pro is the place you're gonna wanna go when it comes to platform. Now, another thing to consider in platform is the chips. Now, the Google Pixel 7 Pro is rocking its own Google Tensor chip, the G2. And I think this is a great direction for Google. Now, controlling their hardware, their chipsets, the software, they're building that closed loop for the positive in the future. 
Now, when we get into the S22 Ultra, being that this is the state's edition, we have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Or if you're out of the states, then you have the Exynos, which I've heard mix reviews about that so i can only speak from a snapdragon perspective i think performance wise between these two they're both are going to be like super smooth super snappy super nice it's just a great experience the one ui is clean although yes i'm rocking nova launcher on both of these devices but in using one ui and in using the pixel launcher i can say that both are smooth both have a great performance standpoint and so forth i just think the number one thing that's gonna probably separate these two is efficiency. I wish one day that Samsung would get into the world of making their own chips and their own software platform, like their own Tizen, which goes on the phones and so forth. But until then, they're just kind of at the mercy of Google and Android, and that's just the way that it is. Now, as far as memory and storage between the two, they're both using the UFS 3.1 as far as storage, which is extremely fast, extremely responsive, and you're getting high RAM counts on both of these devices, 12 gigabytes of RAM. So before we get into the topic of cameras and actually do that comparison, let's do a speaker test really quick. Now, I just want to note that a lot of people were complaining about the speaker set on the S22 Ultra in comparison to the previous Galaxy Note devices. We know that this isn't the Note, but this is what's essentially portraying the Note going forward. So let's continue. Let me go to 44 seconds on this device. This is the Pixel. And run it up. All right, that's at 118. Let me go back to the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So here's what I'll say about the S22 Ultra. The sound on this side, the bottom speaker, is better and more effective than the top speaker, the ear speaker. The ear speaker is not as effective. When I go to the Pixel 7 Pro, give me a second. So it's kind of like a similar experience as to where it's not as balanced stereo speaker wise. Okay, I'll say this. I feel like the low end is more apparent on the Pixel 7 Pro than it is on the S22 Ultra. And that's probably what's attributing to like that more thinner sound feel out of the S22 Ultra versus the Pixel 7 Pro, which has a little bit more low end. Pixel 7 Pro audio seems to sound a little bit more rounded, but I don't know if it's better. It's a, it's a real funny thing, but since I have YouTube open from a display perspective, I'm gonna press play on this uh, video. We got the Pixel 7 Pro on my left hand and then the S22 Ultra in my right hand. Now I'll say this, the colors pop more on the S22 Ultra versus the Pixel 7 Pro, but I also feel like the Pixel 7 Pro has a great like color representation and balance. And then, you know, Samsung, they always have that extra vibrant, extra saturation, which goes on to their display. So. I mean, both of these displays are great either way you go. Okay, now that we've covered the display, the build quality, platform, and so forth, let's talk about cameras. Now, this is an interesting part because we got three cameras versus four, but we're only going to do the three cameras versus the three cameras from the physical test when I take you guys outside in a second. But let's get technical and talk a few specs. First off, the front-facing camera. Now, the S22 Ultra has a massive 40 megapixel front-facing camera, which I don't think anyone is competing with that at this point. And the Pixel Pro is only rocking a 10.8 megapixel sensor front-facing camera. Now let's go to the rear where things are still even interesting because the S22 Ultra has a whopping 108 megapixel main wide-angle camera versus the Pixel 7 Pro's 50 megapixel wide-angle main rear facing camera. That's a big difference. Now, when we get into the telephoto cameras, it gets interesting because the Google Pixel 7 Pro's telephoto camera is rocking 48 megapixels versus the 10 megapixels of the telephoto lens on the S22 Ultra. 
And of course, when we get into the ultra wide cameras, both are rocking that, I guess, standard. Probably every <laughs> smartphone is using this 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Now let's go outside and put them to the real test. Woo! It's finally happening. The battle of the beast of the Android platform. Now, you guys gotta know, Samsung has been holding the crown technology innovative and hardware wise in the Android hemisphere for a while now. But then we have the Pixel 7 Pro stepping this game up in the hardware section. Because personally, I feel like the Pixel experience delivers on a software experience front in a way that's more pleasing to me personally in the Android world. But a lot of people are huge fans of Samsung, myself included, and what they offer because they always stack a ton of features in their UI that they put on top of the Android platform. But then there's pure Android for the pure droid enthusiast that comes from the Pixel 7 Pro. These are the front facing cameras on both. You guys hit the comment section down below and let me know which one you feel is better. Let's get into those rear high megapixel count cameras. Now here on the rear, things get interesting because the S22 Ultra has that 108 megapixel rear wide angle camera versus the 50 megapixel rear wide angle camera on the Pixel 7 Pro. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's all pixel binding and so forth, but essentially the S22 Ultra should be smoking any and everything on the market. So you guys hit the comment section down below and let me know, is the Pixel 7 Pro holding his own and getting a slight edge or is the Samsung S22 Ultra maintaining its status? Okay, so we got the Pixel 7 Pro's 5X telephoto versus the S22 Ultra's 3X. So it's hard to get an equal, you know, focal distance considering that one is just a lot more zoomed in. But you guys let me know which one has the better quality. Okay, so now we're back inside from testing out these two cameras. I need you guys to get down in the comment section below and let me know what you think is the better camera because I'm unable to personally see this footage until I edit it. The next topic of conversation between the two is battery. Yo, both of these devices are rocking a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is massive, which is crazy, which is the best for the consumer. There's been mixed reviews on the S22 Ultra and its efficiency as far as how it uses that 5,000 milliamp hours of battery. As I always tell people, when it comes to the Android platform, you have to optimize your device yourself. Now, I'm still early on the Pixel 7 Pro's battery, but with this 5,000 milliamp hour battery life thus far, it's been looking quite promising. I need to put a little bit more wear and tear on it before I can give a true perspective as to you know battery life in the terms of user experience but as i always say battery life is 100 percent subjective to you the user how you use your apps your screen brightness your amount of notifications your sounds of no sounds there's so many different factors whether you choose to use bluetooth devices and so forth so there's no real way to kind of lock in engage as to how well these 5000 milliamp hour batteries will do for you but nevertheless these are packing really big massive batteries respect so now we just have to talk about the most important topic of discussion between these two and that's user experience what user experience will you look to experience going in between these two devices because it's actually quite different reason being s22 ultra you're getting a one ui overlay versus the google pixel which is that pure android pixel launcher now on both of these devices i'm rocking nova launcher because that's my launcher of choice. I just like being able to customize the, my device on the Android platform to my liking. I like a lot of apps on the bottom rows. So that way I don't have to have a ton of apps taking up my display. That's why I do it this way. And I'm also able to do better custom folders. It just gives me more tweaking to the Android experience that I appreciate. Now, a lot of you guys out there may be huge fans of the One UI setup because it gives you a lot of features, especially a lot of features early ahead of the next Android release. Because I think Samsung, they take note to the fact that it takes them a bit longer to get to the current Android platform. So they'll probably look at some of those features or they'll create those features, let's be real, and then Android will implement them later. So I love that about the One UI Samsung experience. There's always a ton of features and you can never run out of things to do on these Samsung devices. They just pack them 
heavy. So that's like a huge plus to the user experience when it comes to Samsung. Now the difference is on a device like the Pixel 7 Pro, you're dealing with that Pixel launcher, which is what we like to call pure Android, which is a clean version of Android. No overlays, no One UIs, no this, no that. It's just pure Android. That experience is very clean, very smooth, very much butter. Not to say that you don't get a butter experience on the S22 Ultra or with One UI. I just find that the pure Android, the Pixel launcher, is probably by far the cleanest Android experience from a user experience perspective that you can get on the market. And I love that and I appreciate that, which is why I kind of refer to the Pixel as the Apple of Android. Now you can add on to that, you can create whatever you want and build that out to be whatever custom experience you want it to be. As you see, I use Nova Launcher and I create this beautiful setup and experience that I like on my Pixel device. Either way, between these two devices, uh, the Pixel has come away from its previous buildings. They're getting closer and closer and they're catching up from a hardware perspective, that is. And I appreciate the effort. I think they can go even further from the hardware build perspective. As you guys can see between these two, there's one that's looking a little bit better than the other from a build and design perspective, in my opinion, and that's the Samsung. I love this Phantom Black. Not that I don't love the design of the Pixel, I just feel like the Pixel can up it. Give it that true flagship quality feel and look and seal the deal and package. I think Google needs to jump in like literally take a risk and build like a top quality Pixel because it deserves it. It's such a great user experience. Give the people what they're used to on other flagship, you know, Android devices or what the favorite is, which tends to be Samsung. Give them a similar experience on the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Now, another separating factor between these two is going to be price. The Pixel starts off a lot cheaper and that could be the reason why the materials are different. But me personally, from a user experience perspective, between these two, it's so close, it's so neck and neck, it's so much more about the experience you are expecting on Android, because it's two different experiences. You got the pure, the clean, the fastest to update, the fastest to get security patches, the smoothest, in my opinion, that's offered on the Android platform. Some of the best cameras, Let's just keep it a buck. And honestly, I feel like the Google Pixel should be the top Android device, but I think Google needs to put a little bit more effort to make sure that that is 100% the case. Now the S22 Ultra is a long favorite. The Samsung Experience, the Samsung Nights, they stick behind it year after year and they support it. I mean, this thing has an S Pen, for goodness sake, which changes and adds on to a totally different experience, which I do love. I'm a Galaxy Note user. So I've been rocking with Samsung for a minute, but this is on Android 12. We are currently on Android 13. It takes a bit longer to get those updates and patches, which is why I say it's really about you and what Android experience you feel you deserve and want. Oh! And let me add this, give me Samsung's hardware and Pixel software on any day and I'm the most happiest person on Android. On that note, hit the subscribe button and also turn on the bell because if you don't turn on the bell, your subscription is not the same and you can actually miss this dope tech content. You wouldn't want to do that. I know I wouldn't.